I welcome you all back to the lecture series of mechanics of solids. Today we will discuss about the maximum principal strain theory as a continuation of the discussion on the theories of failure. So we learned that in order to have a safe design, the maximum normal stress or sigma 1 has to be less than the allowable value and the maximum shear stress developed should be less than the tau allowable value. This was the maximum normal stress theory and this was the maximum shear stress theory. And we have rewritten this maximum shear stress theory in terms of normal stress by using sigma 1 minus sigma 2 should be less than sigma yield. This is how we have rewritten all these things all the theories of failure means the normal stress theory as well as the shear stress theory. And uh, there is a chance that uh, you might confuse with allowable value and yield value. See if we, if we are, if, let us consider the right left hand side. Left hand side is the actual scenario. That means the actual stress developing in a material. Actual maximum can be either maximum principal stress or it can be maximum shear stress. So the left hand side that means these values are the maximum values that is developing in a material due to the application of external loads. We cannot alter that. right? Now, we have to discuss about the right hand side. The right hand side, in the right hand side, I have written two different terms. Sometimes I written it as sigma y and sometimes I used sigma a. So, you might have a confusion in this. What is the difference between these two? See, if you if we use a sigma y for a design, then you are designing a component in a critical region or on the, on the boundary, right? Anything which is anything can happen if the lot just crosses that particular point. If the failure can occur. That means if you design something using the yield value, then we have to say that it's a critical design, right? Now, what about sigma a? Sigma a is very simple sigma a is nothing but sigma yield by factor of safety. So, this is a more safe design where you have limited the allowable stress to a particular limit or you are not allowing your stress to go to the yield limit which gives you more free space to operate the uh, component. So, do not get confused very simple okay so so most safe design is by using the allowable stress but we discuss everything under the light of yield stress where we have learned that the failure or the permanent yielding happens beyond the yield point that's the reason why we discuss everything about on the yield point which is, which is a critical uh, design but when you solve a problem you have to use the uh, allowable value right now let's let's focus our dis discussion on the uh, maximum principal strain it's very simple every everything every theory all the theories of failure is being is have almost a similar way of explaining it that means if something crosses an yield value something means if suppose it can be restated like this if the normal stress crosses the yield value we have maximum normal stress if the maximum shear stress crosses, uh, sorry, maximum shear stress crosses the maximum shear yield, then we can expect the failure. Similarly, in the maximum principal strain theory, if the maximum strain developed crosses the strain at yield point, we can expect the failure. So, it is, so here I have to rewrite it as E. That means, the strain at the elastic not the yield point is yield stress divided by E x modulus. This gives you the strain at the yield point. So, if the material if, if the, in the material by the application of law, if the strain goes beyond the value of epsilon y, we can expect failure to happen there or occur there. That is the simplest meaning of maximum principal strain theory. Now, the question is how can we calculate the maximum the principal strains? Or the question is which all strains we have to consider to uh, do a safe design. 
right so if we consider uniaxial loading this is sufficient right and we have learned how to calculate the strain we know that there is a lateral strain we know that there is a longitudinal strain right so when the loading direction is more than one that means if you have a bidirectional state or a three dimensional state then the calculation of strain is done by using the poisson's ratio right that we have learned already so that has to be taken into account here so here we are equating everything towards the yield value of strain right so as the stress in one direction produces a lateral deformation in the other two direction that's what i have explained right now and we are going to discuss about that here see we have learned we know the formulas to calculate the value of principal stress of sigma 1 comma 2 as sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 the whole square plus tau x by square this formula is known to you in the which we have discussed in the uh, biaxial state of stress if not kindly go back and uh, learn, have a discussion on this particular topic or learn about this particular topic and come back right so if you have the value of sigma 1 comma sigma 2 comma sigma 3 usually we write it in the order sigma 1 greater than sigma 2 greater than sigma 3 right this is the order we are going to use so if we write if we have the principal stresses we can calculate the and we know that the principal stresses are going to act in some three mutually perpendicular direction right because all the principal stresses are separated by an angle of 90 degree right so definitely if you consider sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 we can calculate the principal strains epsilon 1 epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 which are the principal strains using this particular equation this is a very well known equation sigma 1 by e minus mu into sigma 2 by e minus mu into sigma 3 by e when we take mu by e outside we can have these three equations right now if we talk something in two dimensional definitely we have to cancel the sigma 3 out then we are going to get sigma 1 and epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 so epsilon 1 is sigma 1 by e minus mu into sigma 2 by e similarly epsilon 2 is sigma 2 by e minus mu into sigma 1 by e and you know when you have to use the negative sign and when you have to when you have to use this negative sign and when you when it when it changes to positive sign it's purely based upon the direction of sigma 1 sigma 2 and all those things anyway so this is how we calculate the principal strains right or there is another method in this equation if you rewrite if you rewrite this equation by substituting epsilon x epsilon y and this is gamma xy you can calculate principal strains directly without calculating the principal uh, stresses right this is one method and this is another method uh, you can follow any of these two and after the calculation of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 we are going to compare it with the yield value of strain that's done here right so when you apply the yield value of strain here it is going to sigma y by e right and if we cancel out all these e what we are going to get is sigma y minus sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 or sigma y is equal to sigma 2 minus mu into sigma 1 now if you if you have a discussion on this particular equation we have to conclude that or we have to say that this is a critical design because we are comparing something with yield value right and if we want it to be in a safe zone it has to be sigma allowable where sigma allowable is equal to sigma y by factor of safety right so if you use sigma a here instead of sigma y then system is more in a safe zone than in a critical zone so don't get confused these two are different ways in which we can do the design one is in the critical zone second one is in the safe zone right both are correct but the most accurate way of doing it or designing it is by using sigma 
that is how you have to uh, carry out the design. So, that is all for the maximum you know, principle strain theory and we have two more theories of failure left with which will be discussed in the coming class. Thank you.